Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> Welcome to Annunciation Parish. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Our celebrant for today's Mass is Father Steve. Before we begin our celebration, there are a few announcements. The Masses for Christmas are as follows. December 24th, Christmas Eve, Mass will be held at 4 p.m. at both Holy Rosary and Holy Spirit. Midnight Mass will be at midnight and held at Holy Rosary. December 25th, Christmas Day, Masses will be held at 8.30 a.m. at Holy Spirit, 10.30 at Holy Rosary, and at noon in Spanish here at Holy Spirit. Please note that Masses for next Sunday will be held on Saturday afternoon, which is Christmas Day, and on Sunday, the 26th, according to the normal Mass schedule. You may still sign up to receive a carol a day through the 12 days of Christmas. To sign up, go to the parish website or contact Mrs. Sweeney at the office. The parish office will be closed on Friday, December 24th, in, the, in observance of Christmas. It will reopen on Monday, December 27th at 8.30 a.m. Our gathering hymn is number 545, Sing Out Earth and Skies. Please stand. the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Today we hear in the Gospel of the visitation of Mary going to Elizabeth. And remember always that when she went there, she brought Jesus with her. And so that visitation of Jesus within Mary to Elizabeth kind of foreshadows what's going to happen later this week when Jesus comes and visits all of us at Christmas time. And so let us prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist by calling to mind our sins and asking the Lord's forgiveness and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words, in my life. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
Let us pray. For forth we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by a message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ, through the one who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> and so now we will light of the fourth candle on our Advent wreath as we continue to symbolize just that closeness, that closeness of the light of Jesus into our world. reading from the book of the prophet Micah. Thus says the Lord, You, Bethlehem Ephrata, too small to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient times. Therefore the Lord will give them up until the time when she who is to give birth has born, and the rest of his kindred shall return to the children of Israel. He shall stand firm and shepherd his flock by the strength of the Lord in the majestic name of the Lord his God. And they shall remain, for now his greatness shall reach to the ends of the earth. He shall be peace. The word of the Lord.
from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. In holocausts and sin offerings you took no delight. Then I said, As is written of me in the scroll, Behold, I come to do your will, O God. First he says, Sacrifices and offerings, holocausts and sin offerings, you neither desired nor delighted in. These are offered according to the law. Then he says, Behold, I come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second. By this will, we have been consecrated through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me? that the mother of my Lord shall come to me. For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped but for me. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. The Gospel of the Lord. Being truly obedient to God isn't easy. There's a few reasons for this. First, you know, we're told from when we're very young that you should be in control of your life. You are the one that needs to make the decisions. You can't let anyone tell you what to do. You'll only be free if you can make your own decisions. And so surrendering your power, even to God, can inside feel like, you know, you're doing something wrong. The second thing is, I think we just like the feeling of being in control. You know, we just want to be in charge. It makes us feel powerful, and it makes us feel safe. But how else can we be safe? How else can we be safe than by that? 
The problem about trying to feel safe by always being in control is that we can't actually always be in control. Right? There's so many things that we do that we try to say, if I could just control this, I could make this all work out the way I want, I'd be totally safe. It's an illusion. We're faced all the time with things over which we have no control. Our lives take turns we didn't expect. We have to recalculate that path over and over again. The idea that we could map out a course from our life and just by the force of our own will make it come out that way, I think is really not true. And there's probably a few people here who are nodding, saying, yeah, it didn't quite work out the way I planned it either. You know, I, and I was thinking about myself, and you know, I've gotten to be, to be and do a lot of the things that I dreamed of at different times. I've been a therapist, a monk, an author, a college professor, a priest, all these different things, but the path getting there was never what I expected it was going to be. As a matter of fact, there are many things over which I had no control that foiled things along the way, that threw off my plan, that threw off the timetables for all this stuff, and still do. Every day, a new thing that throws off my great plans for things. But God has got me there anyway. God has gotten those things there through those strange twists and turns. We grab for control. We bristle at the thought that God or the church or anything else would dare to tell us what to do. We feel it's okay to disregard or redefine God's precepts when they clash with our own. Yet, yet we'll stop at a red light at 4 o'clock in the morning on a completely clear road when there's no one coming from any direction. I will not be told what to do. You will not tell me what to do. You know? And we obediently wait for the light to change before moving on. Now, I'm not saying go out and run red lights. <laughs> not what I'm saying. But just that we surrender our wills every day to various sorts of things. We do it all the time. And sometimes it really doesn't make any sense. So why would God not also be one of those things that we freely surrender our will to? That we, you know, um, we give that will to, even whether we understand it or not. We'll do it. Why not for God? Look at our second reading today. It talks about Jesus taking the body that was prepared for him and giving it to the service of God's will. We heard this. When Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. And behold, I come to do your will, O God. Now the author here is putting the, the words of Psalm 40 into Jesus' mouth. And that guy in the psalm has got a lot of troubles. He's in a lot of problems. But instead of trying to push God off and take control himself, and instead of trying to it that way, he turns himself over to God. So listen to the other words in the psalm that come before and after the passage quoted today. Surely I wait for the Lord who bends down to me and hears my cry. He draws me from the pit of destruction, puts a new song into my mouth. Evil surround me, but your courage fails me not. You are my help. You are my deliverer, O God. Do not delay. Jesus is the one whom this psalm is talking about. Although experiencing the ups and downs of life, although having difficulties, yet places his will in God's hands. Instead of fighting by his own power, he takes all that God has given, his resources, his body, even his will, his decision making, and he places these at the service of God. Mary is also an example of doing the same thing. At the Annunciation, she's thrown a real curveball. And you know, we talk about plans for your life, talk about how things are laid out in a certain way, and you figure it's going to go a certain way. Mary was a virgin, 
and not planning to have any children. That's why when the angel tells her about the baby, she says, how can this happen since I do not know man? There's, I, I, I'm, I'm a, you know, that she was never going to have intercourse or children. That was her plan. Yet Mary puts herself in God's hands, in her doubt, in her worry, in her confusion about what is going to happen here. We could learn a lot from her. Just follow what God is asking you to do with the same openness, with that same willingness that you have to fill out a form at a dentist's office in order to get seen. That same thing we would just surrender and just do. Just trust in the power of God over your own will and know there are greater things possible. Mary trusts in God's power and promises and wondrous things happen. Wondrous things happen for her. Wondrous things happen for us because she trusted. Just like Jesus, she offers herself, her will, even her own body for God's use. And although both Jesus and Mary experience ups and downs in following God, in the end, it all works out spectacularly. All works out spectacularly. And we'll see that this spring when we look at the resurrection, how just well everything does work out. Perhaps we can not question God's laws so much, not believe that our own interpretations of them is superior to what we've learned, to what, how the church interprets them and t- teaches us. Perhaps we can also counteract that tendency to obey God as long as it fits our own plans then we can embrace offering ourselves to God in mind, heart, and body, trusting that the Lord has got a better plan. The Lord has got a plan out there, believing Jesus has truly come to show us the way, has truly come to save us. Mary did this when she said yes to God's request that she change her plans. And Elizabeth says to Mary today, Blessed are you who believe the words spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. Blessed are all who can surrender our will like Mary and let the Lord take the lead, even if it's not the way we thought it should go. Blessed are those who believe that the Lord's promises to protect us and to ultimately bring us to fulfillment can and will be fulfilled. Let us now together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten from not made, consubstantial. done in God's will. And so turning with that thought, we offer these prayers.
Reverend Church and its leaders be inspired by the message of this advent to perform prophetic works of justice and for the poor we pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. that world leaders may be better able to read signs of the times and work ever more hard enough to satisfy their people longing for peace. Pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That those who spread the gospel throughout the world may give people witness to the love of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. Pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That those who are facing important life choices this season be inspired by the example of Mary, who longed to do God's will in her life. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That expected mothers may realize their blessedness and the blessedness of the fruit of their womb. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. that those in our community who are far from home or loved ones may feel the embrace of this family of faith. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. that the Lord will give new life to those who have died, especially Ruth Lanowitz and Bernard Riley, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Almighty God, hear our prayer. Give us the open heart to receive your answers to our prayers that we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Our song of preparation is number 704, Hail Mary, Gentle Woman.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and the glory of the name, for our good and the all of the whole church. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling, John the Baptist sang of his coming, and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, that the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, and Robert our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people who have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all of your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, especially for Ruth Zedanowitz and for Bernard Ryder, and for all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Oh, with him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. Let us stop for each other, so in peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Make a small note that we have a couple of the tags still left on the tree out in the back vestibule. Those are tags um, for seminarians in the diocese, the young men who are studying for the priesthood, and that is um, at Christmas time, uh, we ask people to donate some uh, gift cards to them, and they use those through the year to buy different supplies because they can't have a job because they're studying in seminary. And I know I, it was good to have those myself when I was in seminary. So there's a few left. If anyone feels so moved, please grab one of those. The Lord be with you. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent, and enrich you with his blessings. Amen. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain forever. Amen. That is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Thirty-eight. O come, O come, Emmanuel. We'll be singing verses one and seven.